This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids, reviewing exam number three. Page one had a shear stress problem where we gave you a beam loaded as shown and gave you the cross section and we wanted to know some stresses on that section. A couple of different points and some of the values that lead into that. The main things you need to know were that we figured the reactions for you, but it was a double cantilever, a cantilever at each end with a three kip per foot load and these other forces, really you can ignore them. All I'm caring about is the stre shear stress, shear force. So the reactions were given as at B, 44.2 kips and at E, 27.8 kips. Those points were eight feet in six feet in from the right end and then we had two points on the beam C and D in this interior span where we wanted to figure the, the shear loads and then the stresses. Okay, The section was given to you as uh, 10 by 20 and then we gave you a point 16 inches from the bottom called point Z and uh, first thing you wanted, we wanted to know was the average shear stress which is average shear stress is V over A, shear stress divided by area. And so you had to figure out what the shear stress was and just do a little free body diagram as I've done for the shear stress at point C, which is two feet to the right of point B where that support. I've still uh, just the area under the load curve minus the uh, reaction. So I've got three kips per foot times a total of 10 feet and subtract from it that reaction at B so the shear at B is 44.2 minus 3 times 10 or 14.2 kips I think most people got that although not all so the area of that cross section is 20 by 10 is 200 square inches so the shear stress there is 0.071 KSI I think we gave you the answers in PSI but you can do that conversion the other test had to uh, figure the shear average shear stress at point D. And so point D is here four feet to the left of the reaction at E. Same kind of free body diagram. Three kips per foot times four plus six feet. Minus that reaction 27.8 gives me a shear of 2.2 .2 kips. So my average shear stress was 2.2 .2 divided by the area. Of, so it's 0 .011 KSI. Okay, so all the tests had this same question, number two. What's the maximum Q, which is Y bar prime A prime, on that section? Well, the maximum Q occurs at the neutral axis where I have the biggest area above and away from the neutral axis. So the area of this at the neutral axis above it is 10, half of the height, times 10. So it's 10 times 10 is 100 square inches. And Y bar prime is the distance from the centroid of that area, a 10 by 10 square, although my drawing is not to scale. Anyway, times, which is half of its height, 10 over 2 is 5 inches. So Y bar prime is 5. So Q max for that shape is just 5 Y bar prime A time, times A of 100, 500 cubic inches. Um, number three was to calcul uh, calculate some values to calculate the shear stress at point Z, 16 inches above the bottom. So here I've drawn it again. Point Z is 16 inches above the bottom as we see over here, so it's four inches from the top. So the area, well first we want to Q at point Z it's the area away from the neutral axis at the point where I'm trying to calculate shear stress. So that's just 4 by 10 or 40 inches for A prime. And the centroid distance is the center of that area, which is half of 4 from the top, or 2 inches, 10 inches to the top. So it's 10 minus 4 over 2 or 8 inches to the neutral axis from that centroid. So Q at Z is just a 8, which is Y bar prime, times A, 
the area 40 inches square inches so it's 320 cubic inches or inches cubed we wanted we need to know moment of inertia we're going for this formula down here VQ over IT of course so the moment of inertia of a rectangle is BH cubed over 12 there's the numbers it works out to be 66 67 inches to the fourth T, the simplest one of all, is just the width of the cross section at point Z. So for a rectangle, it's just that simple, the width of the section. Ten, T is equal to 10 inches. Finally, we get to the point where we're going to just calculate the shear stress at point Z. On the test, we gave you the other, we gave you the shear value, whatever it was, at the other point from what you calculated the average shear stress up here. Anyway, so at C, the shear is 14.2 kips. I just plug that into this equation. These other values that I just got here for Q, I, and T. And I get that the shear stress at point C, at point Z on the cross section is 0 0.0686 KSI. Similarly, at point D, shear is 2.2 kips. So the shear stress at point Z, at point D, due to the 2.2 kip. Um, load force is those numbers into the equation 0.0106 KSI